Hey, it's Tom and Mike from Take Time to Travel. Toronto has an incredibly picturesque waterfront skyline. And it's not just pretty from a distance. Toronto's harbour front has so many things to see, do and eat. From beautiful sandy beaches to lovely green parks. And of course, who could forget? Lots of tasty restaurants and patios. It's definitely worth the time to check out. So let's get started and take a tour of Toronto's beautiful waterfront. We'll start on the west side of Toronto's harbour front over by Marina Key West. The nicely situated 120 slip marina has a variety of sailboats as well as other types of water vessels and is lined by a lovely waterfront trail. A little bit further along Marina Key West, just beside the waterfront trail, you'll find some nice landscaping and some pretty blooming flowers, as well as the winding entrance to the Toronto Music Garden. Let's go and have a look. There's this charming vine-covered stage with nice views of the CN Tower, surrounded by some little trees and gardens. And just behind, there's this picturesque amphitheater where lots of people have gathered to relax in comfort, enjoy the sun, and listen to the band play live music from underneath the willow tree. What a delightful setting to listen to some live music. Love it. And when you walk around the trails of the Toronto Music Garden, down towards the bottom of the amphitheater, you'll find this side also has great views of the CN Tower. And we even saw lots of people having afternoon tea picnics. How refined! The Toronto Music Garden sure is beautiful. But let's keep going and check out some more of Toronto's waterfront. As we continued along the busy waterfront trail, we pass by some green open areas with wonderful views. What a lovely looking park to enjoy the sunshine and warm weather. As we kept walking along the harbour front trail, we saw some boats and yachts. And this white tall ship. Very cool. But let's keep going and see some more of Toronto's wonderful waterfront. Just at the bottom of Spadina, there's the Spadina Wave Deck, which is this interesting wavy boardwalk. Continuing eastward, you'll arrive at HTO Park West, which is a charming green park with some winding walking trails and some lovely landscaping. It's a quiet park with CN Tower views, magnificent mature willow trees, and is surrounded by water. HTO Park West sure is nice. A little bit further east of HTO, HTO Park West is the bigger and busier HTO Park. It has the same beautiful willow trees, green rolling landscaping, and CN Tower views, but it also has something else pretty spectacular. It has the HTO Beach, which is the perfect place to hang out on a hot summer's day with all the giant yellow umbrellas and the colorful Muskoka chairs. This sure is a picturesque area of Toronto's waterfront to relax. So summery. But there's more to see. So let's continue on and check out some more of Toronto's harbour front. We headed down to Queen's Quay, which has the streetcar running along it. Then we made our way back up along the waterfront trail, past the sailboats tied up at the wooden docks, and over to the Lakeshore Boardwalk, past the 1920s era Norvik One Ferry, which was used to shuttle passengers and vehicles across the Ottawa River, and has since been converted to a 1,700 square foot live aboard boat, which even includes a fireplace. There's also the Toronto Marine Police Building, which houses its fleet of police boats and has some nice city views. Love the views from here on the waterfront trail. But we're getting hungry, so let's keep going past the marina and the Amsterdam Bridge and over to a local favorite, Amsterdam Brew House. It's a popular lakeside brew pub that brews its own craft beers. It has delicious food, but it's most known for its massive lakeside patio. The lakeside patio is just across from the Norvik One boat and just has the boardwalk separating the restaurant's patio from the lovely Lake Ontario and Toronto Island view. Even though the patio is absolutely enormous and seems to just keep on going and going, there's still usually a massive lineup to get a table. Like this one here that we saw at lunchtime on a sunny Saturday in the spring. 
So come early if you want a table on the patio, like we did. We arrived just as the restaurant opened to make sure that we got a nice spot on the terrace. We got the perfect table right at the railing, with views of the CN Tower, the Waterfront Trail, Norvik One, Lake Ontario, and the Toronto Islands. We could even watch the planes taking off and landing at the Toronto Island Airport. What a great view! To drink, I had the house-brewed 20-ounce Amsterdam Blonde Lager, and Tom tried the No Boats on Sunday Cider. Tom quite enjoyed his ice-cold cider. After all that walking, and I also quite enjoyed my refreshing pint of Amsterdam Blonde Beer. To start, we shared the spinach and artichoke dip, which is baked in a wood-fired oven and served with tasty pita breads and seasonal veggies. We thought that the presentation of the spinach dip was very nice. And it tasted delicious. For the mains, I had the smokehouse burger, which is topped with white cheddar, bacon, and a huge onion ring, and served on a brioche bun with fries. Tom had the fish and chips with three-speed beer battered haddock, creamy coleslaw, tartar sauce, and fresh cut fries. Tom's portion of the beer battered fish and chips was humongous, just like his humongous bite. But it did taste excellent. My smokehouse burger was also massive. Just look at the size of it. I had to use both hands and pretty much dislocate my jaw just to get a bite. But it tasted amazing. As we ate our food, we got a couple more drinks. The Blueberry Lemon Mojito, as well as the Amsterdam Good Caesar with Mott's Clamato Juice. After we finished our tasty main courses on Amsterdam Brewhouse's patio, we sipped on our drinks and enjoyed the lively atmosphere and beautiful scenery. Very pretty. For dessert, we shared the house-made New York cheesecake served with seasonal compote. The mouth-watering cheesecake was big enough to share and tasted incredible. We really enjoyed our meal at Amsterdam Brew House and will definitely be back again. But let's head out and keep on going to explore some more of Toronto's beautiful waterfront. If you walk down the waterfront trail on the east side of the brewery, you'll make it over to the cool-looking Simcoe Wave Deck. The Simcoe Wave Deck boardwalk has six wooden pathways side by side, with each pathway closer to the water having progressively higher and higher curves, which resemble the shape of waves. Very neat, but let's keep going. If you keep heading east along the waterfront trail past Amsterdam Brew House and the Simcoe Wave Deck, you'll pass by another marina with nice views. Just around the corner from the marina, you'll find some lovely city views, nice patios, the harbourfront centre concert stage, and another beautiful stretch of the lakeside wooden boardwalk. From here, you can catch a water taxi to the Toronto Island or have a leisurely stroll along the boardwalk, which are quite popular activities on hot summer days. Just up ahead, you can see the tall ship Kajama, docked against the boardwalk. If you want, you can also take the impressive 165 foot long Kajama for a cruise around the harbour, like these people in line here. This section of the Toronto Waterfront Trail sure does have a lot of things to do. Further along the boardwalk, there are these yachts and ferry boats, which I think you can charter for larger parties and for corporate events, which we certainly are not going to do for this video. But we will try another one of the waterfront patios. Come on, let's go check it out. We walked up the stairs to grab a table on the patio of Joe Bird's, which serves delicious deep fried chicken. After we waited for a spot to open up, we followed the hostess through the patio over to our table, just inside the glass doors and beside the bar. We sat down and enjoyed the views of the patio overlooking the lake and the boats. To drink, I had the Stadium Island Peach Cider and Tom got the brunch Caesar, which only cost five bucks. For brunch, my mom ordered the fried chicken bird sandwich with cheese and crispy home fries. And I had the massive waffle fried chicken sandwich with bacon, garlic mayo, slaw, and home fries. And Tom also got the juicy and crispy and delicious fried chicken bird sandwich with smoked mustard aioli, provolone cheese, and fries. The huge waffle sandwich was loaded with juicy crispy fried chicken. Just look at the size of it. I think the chicken was also drizzled 
with some maple syrup. So the massive sandwich had an incredible combination of flavors as you bit into it. What a delicious sandwich. They really do know how to make fried chicken here. We've been to Joe Bird's many times and keep going back, but we've never tried their takeout RV. We should at some point. Alongside Joe Bird's in the Queen's Key Terminal, there's this big mural of wings, which is a great spot for a picture. But let's keep making our way through the Queen's Key Terminal and head over to the escalators so that we can grab some dim sum on the second floor. The restaurant is called Pearl Harbor Front Chinese Cuisine. It serves upscale Chinese and dim sum cuisine with nice views overlooking Lake Ontario. Let's head inside now and give it a try. We checked in and followed the host through the restaurant over towards our table. Shortly after we sat down at our table, they brought out some hot tea, which we sipped on while we browsed over their dim sum menu. And while we enjoyed the nice views overlooking Toronto's waterfront. Just around the corner from the dining room, there's also this nice seating section overlooking the park, the tall ship Kajama, and of course great views overlooking the boardwalk as well as Lake Ontario. The section also wraps around this way too. These tables really do have excellent views. Too bad we didn't get one. To eat, we started with the sticky rice and lotus leaf, which after a little struggle, Tom got open. The big portion of sticky rice was loaded with meat and tasted delicious. Then we got the steaming shumai pork and shrimp dumplings, as well as the harkao shrimp dumplings and some of the pan-fried turnip cake. The pan-fried turnip cake as well as the shumai and harkao tasted excellent. Next, we shared an order of their steamed barbecue pork bun. And if that wasn't enough food, we also ordered the rice noodle roll with barbecue pork, which was loaded with pork, as well as the pan-fried hockey puck dumplings with shrimp and chives, which were nice and crispy on both sides and tasted amazing. Overall, we thoroughly enjoyed our meal at Pearl Harborfront Chinese Cuisine. Continuing along the waterfront trail on the east side of the Queen's Key Terminal building, there's some lines for water taxis that will take you to different stops on the Toronto Islands. You can get tickets for one of the water taxi companies at the kiosk or at the side of this pretty Red Toronto Harbour Commissioners Building, which also has a gift shop. And around the other side of the building, there's also some tasty treats at this place called Beaver Tails, Cue de Castor. It's got a nice little waterfront patio and serves delicious beaver tail pastries. Let's head inside and try it out. We placed our order and shortly afterwards, our beaver tails were ready. We picked them up and made our way outside to their pretty little back patio overlooking the water. What a great place to enjoy the sunny weather. We sat down at the bench so that we could eat our tasty treats. I got the avalanche beaver tail with cheesecake spread, score bits, and caramel sauce. And Tom got the apple pie beaver tail with apple pie filling with whole apple slices, caramel sauce, and crumble. The avalanche beaver tail pastry was loaded with score bits and was super rich and flavorful. Very tasty. It's my go-to beaver tail. Beaver Tail's Cue de Castor sure does have a picturesque patio, especially if you get a spot on the red and white Muskoka chairs to eat your beaver tails and to take in the beautiful harbor front views on a nice sunny day. We really enjoyed our tasty beaver tail desserts at Cue de Castor, but there's more to see and eat along Toronto's waterfront, so let's keep going. Over in Harbour Square Park West, you'll find some lovely little gardens with a charming walking trail winding through, as well as this big, interesting ball-like structure. I think the sculpture is called the Sundial Folly. It's certainly different but I think I just prefer this water feature with nice views overlooking the lake. If you continue walking along the wooden boardwalk and make your way further east along Toronto's harbour front, you'll find that the waterfront trail continues and it's lined with lots of seating to take in the beautiful scenery. 
If you keep walking down the path, you'll eventually make it to the Jack Layton Ferry Terminal, where you catch the ferry to the Toronto Islands. There's also the Jack's Got Your Back Layton Memorial, where you can take a nice picture. But let's head back up to the Queen's Key so that we can eat some more tasty food. We'll try the Japanese fine dining restaurant called Miku. Let's head inside through the revolving glass doors and into the Water Park Place building so that we can enjoy some of Miku's tasty Japanese cuisine. After we checked in with the hostess, we followed the host past the kitchen and the wine rack, down the hallway and over to our booth. The 7,000 square foot eatery has a nice bar area as well as a raw bar and sushi bar. Miku specializes in flame seared aburi sushi served in this contemporary upscale restaurant. To drink, I had the brickwork cider with a glass of ice on the side. Then for an appetizer, we shared the ebi fritters which have large white tiger prawns, soy balsamic reduction, sweet chili aioli and chili powder. Tom and I both really enjoyed the EB fritters. They were super tasty. For the main course, we ordered the Aburi Oshi sampler, which had two pieces each of salmon, ibi, and saba oshi, as well as the miku roll. It's rolled in tabiko and has sockeye salmon, uni, crab, cucumber, and miku sauce, as well as some nigiri sushi, four pieces of Atlantic salmon, two pieces of Hokkaido scallop, and two pieces of fatty tuna belly, and also the miku signature sushi selection plate, which is a 10-piece platter of specialty nigiri roll and oshi sushi. We enjoyed all the sushi. But I think my favorite was the Otoro Fatty Tuna Belly Nigiri, which tasted incredible. Fatty Tuna Belly just melts in your mouth. For dessert, we shared the Ichigo Mochi Dome. It has a brown sugar cookie, strawberry cream, mashed strawberry, walnut toffee, and jasmine tea ice cream. Dining at Miku was an overall great experience. But let's keep going and see some more of Toronto's harbor front. If you continue to walk east across the Queen's Quay, then you'll see some of the new modern condo towers that have been constructed along the harbour front. What a cool design! Love the open concept, how the top few floors are stacked across the other buildings. But let's keep moving and make our way over to Sugar Beach. Sugar Beach Park looks very beautiful as soon as you walk in. It's surrounded by greenery and modern buildings and it has this big rock poking up through the sandy beach as well as some Muskoka chairs underneath the big pink umbrellas. Sugar Beach sure is picturesque. You can even see the CN Tower poking up in the distance from your Muskoka chair, underneath the umbrellas, or from a spot in the shade under the willow trees. And of course, there's a boardwalk. Sugar Beach sure is a great spot to soak up the sun on those hot summer days, with a nice view of Lake Ontario and the Toronto Islands in the distance. We really enjoyed exploring the harbour front in Toronto, from the nice walkways and the beautifully landscaped parks, to the amazing waterfront patios, and of course, the delicious food. There's so much to see and do during a stroll along Toronto's waterfront. Well, as always, we had a lot of fun making today's video, and we hope you enjoyed watching it too. If you did, we'd really appreciate it if you'd like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications on our future videos. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and it helps our channel to grow. And remember, take time to travel. Catch you on the next one.